Hi, this is Richard Garfield with The Game Glimpse, where I drone on and on about a game that's on my mind. I'll tell you what interests me in the game, and perhaps tie that into games in general. Maybe I'll tell a story from my experiences. But for now, let the droning begin. The game I'm going to talk about today is Tic-Tac-Toe. Tic-Tac-Toe was invented by Robert Tic-Tac-Toe, who was an accountant working for Lloyd's of London in the early 20th century. Tic-Tac-Toe is played on a 3x3 grid. Uh, Each player alternates placing their symbol in one of the cells. The first player to play puts an X in one of the nine cells, and the next player puts an O in any unoccupied cell, and they alternate in this way until one player has three in a row. They can be vertically, horizontally, or that tricky diagonal. Tic-tac-toe was not created out of nothing. There were several precedents which were floating around. If you want to be uncharitable, Robert Toe's contribution was less creation than formalizing the rules. Prior to Mr. Toe, Games similar to Tic-Tac-Toe were played on different size boards, uh, 2 by 4 2 by 3 sometimes even the minuscule 2 by 2 board. Also, players would often use symbols other than uh, X and O. Uh, they would use Qs and As and sometimes check marks or little spirals. The winning conditions also varied. Uh, sometimes there were different local victory conditions that had nothing to do with three in a row. Uh, Sometimes there was the uh, slithering snake pattern popular in the north, and then the star pattern, which uh, in the continent was a little more popular. And, And wherever you went, you would find your own pattern for victory. And so Robert Toe did a great service to the game industry by bringing these variant games under one umbrella and and he really chose quite an elegant solution to these uh to these issues the three by three works very well and uh, the x's and those are chosen to be uh highly contrasting symbols and uh the three in a row is something which is understandable and it's it's easy to see why it became the classic that it is today Mr. Toe's life ended uh, somewhat tragically. He died penniless in in the 40s, uh, 48. He uh, tried to follow up his success with Tic-Tac-Toe with other games, uh, but they never uh, really caught on in the same way. And then uh, he he spent most of his fortune uh, accrued from uh, his design suing Knots and Crosses, which was a Tic-Tac-Toe ripoff, which came out shortly after Tic-Tac-Toe. The game plays identically with tic-tac-toe. The only difference is instead of putting O's, you put zeros, uh, noughts. And it seems ridiculous that, uh, that that would stand up in the courts, but it did. Uh, games are notoriously difficult to protect, and uh, Robert Toe learned that the hard way. Robert Toe has one other peculiar legacy, which uh, I'd be amiss not to mention. His son Charles remembered him always sucking on a mint while he was growing up. It was his habit. He, he had uh, stopped smoking and, uh, and uh, just compulsively sucked on mints all the time. Later, Charles went into the confectioner business, and he started a line of mints, which he named after his father. Uh, and that's where Tic Tacs come from. I love games that can be played seriously as well as casually. Tic Tac Toe's no exception. Tic Tac Toe's played in playgrounds, and and yet it's played very seriously as well. When when growing up, I, it was actually one of the games that I, I took very seriously, and uh, I was an alternate in the uh, 1980 Summer Olympics for tic-tac-toe, which unfortunately uh, the U.S. boycotted, um, but <clears throat> had they not, I would have uh, represented the U.S. Uh, as, as a tic-tac-toe player, uh, as an alternate. But uh, still, I would have been on the team. And uh, who knows, maybe, maybe, maybe I would have actually ended up playing. My first real game strategy books that I read were, were on tic-tac-toe. Uh, uh, first with just general strategy, but later on specific openings and uh, uh, philosophies of, of, of tic-tac-toe. As, as I became a broader game player, uh, I stopped specializing so much in any particular game. And, and then I, I started paying attention to all sorts of different games like, uh, like bridge and poker and uh, hobby games and so forth. 
but uh, my heart never really left tic-tac-toe. Anybody who's followed serious tic-tac-toe understands that the game has changed radically in the last 20 years uh, because of computers. Uh, this this became very public when, when uh, the world champion was beaten by a computer constructed by IBM, Deep Pink. Deep Pink... Uh, won the won the championship and and that's kind of taken the steam out of a lot of tic-tac-toe programs but even before that it was it was changing a lot computers were a good enough assistance to your play that i mean formally with championships as in a grueling game you would be able to take a break and reconvene the next day even in the the, the late 80s uh, they began to change this rule because because if i was playing a high level tic-tac-toe game with somebody and we took a break and it was my turn well back at the hotel I can use a, a computer as well as my team of seconds to sort of figure out what the best answers are and the next day come come in armed with uh, with a, a much better strategy than than I would have if I had had to play play straight through getting a break on your turn was an advantage and 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 that couldn't stand so in 1989 they made a rule that you couldn't actually break a championship game up in the middle. You had to play straight through. Well, the the nature of the game really changed. It became one more of endurance than, than strategic thinking. If you can last through the five or six hours of uh, grueling intellectual battle, which is the top-level tic-tac-toe game, then you're going to end up uh, probably being a champion. And, and, and so the nature of the champions really changed. They became younger and, and uh, less experienced, but, uh, but able to endure those rigors. Games have come a long way since the early 20th century, and tic-tac-toe has not remained untouched. This is an exciting time to be in games and uh, to be a tic-tac-toe player in particular. In the last five years, we've seen uh, several expansions for tic-tac-toe, which include uh, additional letters for additional players. So you can play tic-tac-toe as a party game, or at least if you have three people, still play. And these extra symbols for play uh, are useful variations for just playing with two. Uh, Sometimes when playing tic-tac-toe, just for fun, I'll I'll play something other than X or O's. Uh, I, I really actually think Y's play very well. I never would have thought when I was on the uh, tic-tac-toe Olympic team that I would play a tic-tac-toe role-playing game uh, or World of Tic-Tac-Toe Online. I-, I was really skeptical that they'd be able to maintain the the nature of tic-tac-toe in a massively multiplayer game. But, uh, you know, after I worked my way up to 60th level as an X, I had to admit they had something there. Even though it was something mostly new, it really did manage to, to capture the spirit of tic-tac-toe. But even though these uh, variants and expansions of tic-tac-toe are by and large excellent and really leverage the game design technology that's come about in the last 50 years, I encourage my listeners to to go back and play the original a few times. I think it's a good idea to keep in touch with your game roots. And I think no matter how far we go, Robert Toe's original creation, in its original form, is going to live on. And now it's time for the kids' turn. So, Terry, do you like TikTok?